Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Al YouTube channel and it is time for challenge number 7 in my No Spend November challenge and giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel, I hope that by the end of this video, you'll be inspired to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. If you're new to my channel or you're new to my No Spend November series, what I'm trying to do this month is not spend money on any new crafty items and give myself little challenges to use what I have. So far I have done six challenges. All of the videos from the No Spend November series, the playlist is linked below so you can check it out. And if you would like to play along and be entered to win a fantastic prize, make sure to check out the introduction and rules video. But for now, here's a little overview of this month. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at callmecraftyowl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. I hope that you're going to join me this month and get entered to win that fantastic card kit. Don't forget that introduction and rules video is linked below and that has all the details on how you can enter. For today, for challenge number seven, the theme is Would You Be Mine? And this isn't W-O-U-L-D, this is W-O-O-D. I want you to create a new project that uses wood in some sort of way. It could be wood pattern paper like I'm using. It could be a stamp of a tree which is made out of wood. It could be a wooden embellishment. Again, use what you have as long as it fits the challenge. For my card today, I'm going to be using that wooden pattern paper to create what I call a wood paneling effect. I will be creating a background that looks like it's made out of wood floorboards. To do this, I got a piece of Simple Stories Faith pattern paper. And for my focal point, I will be using the Avriel Mary Flowers stamp and die set. I will be stamping and embossing with Versamark and Detail Silver embossing powder and coloring my image in with some Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers. I did already pre-cut and score my card base and I cut a couple pieces of cardstock. This white one will be used for the wood floor and this red one will be a mat for it. If I add any products as I go on, I will be sure to let you know, but if I leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty! Off camera, I cut a piece of white cardstock that was three and a half inches tall by four and three quarter inches wide to lay my wood floor on. I knew that I wanted to cut my floorboards to half an inch thick, so that is why one of those dimensions, the three and a half, has to be a multiple of a half an inch. I cut a piece of my wood grain cardstock that was larger than that piece, and then I started cutting strips that were half inch wide. You'll notice here that I'm just pushing my paper from the right to the left, using the half inch mark on the left of my cutting line. Now when it gets too skinny that my fingers can no longer hold that in place, I brought in a piece of scotch blue removable tape, and I just temporarily hold that paper in place while I cut the rest of the strips. 
Next, I'm going to ink all of my wood floor planks. This will help tell the planks apart later when I place them on the cardstock. It adds a little dimension and a little antiquing. Here in just a second, I will lift two of the floorboards up to a piece of white cardstock so you can see the difference between an inked and an uninked piece. While it might not be a great difference, it definitely does make an impression on the final piece. I finished inking those up. Off camera, I ran that piece of white cardstock that I showed you earlier through my Xyron. This gives me just a nice sheet of adhesive to adhere my floor planks. And that's what I'm gonna start doing now. The first plank gets placed about a third of the way into the cardstock, and then I trim off the excess, and this is going to finish out that row. You will wanna make sure when you do that, that you turn it around so the inked edges are together. You place that right up against there, and then you'll see there's a little bit of overhang on the right, but I will trim all of that off later. The next board goes about two thirds of the way into the cardstock. Once again, I trim off that excess and flip it around. And then finally, the third plank will fill the cardstock all the way from the left to right. Once all three of those rows are laid down, I repeat this same pattern and process until I have filled up the front of the cardstock completely. I did end up cutting one extra floorboard and that was just in case I needed it. You might have noticed in that close up that now not all of the edges are inked. So once I cut off the excess pattern paper, I bring back in my gray ink pad and I go all the way around the outside edges. Now that some of my base pieces were ready, I went ahead and put together as much of the card as I could. The gray floorboard piece gets matted with that red card stock and then both of these get adhered to the front center of my gray card base. Now I'm gonna stamp my sentiment and my focal point. In my Misty is a piece of Strathmore Bristol Smooth cardstock. I find this works best with those real brush markers. And I'm going to line up my floral and my sentiment on there. Once I have those in place, I pick it up with the door of my Misty, and then I'm gonna use my embossing buddy on the front of that cardstock so that my embossing powder only sticks to where I want it. You might also notice I ran my fingers across the stamps, and that's because they haven't been used yet, so I wanted to take off any oils from production just to make sure it's stamped nicely. I could tell once I lifted the stamps back up that it was nice and crisp, so I did not need to stamp a second time. I poured my powder over the top of both images, and then I brought in my heat tool to heat set that powder. And now I thought I would slow down the video just a little bit to show you how I do my quick and easy coloring. For the red flowers, I am using number 21 light carmine and number 24 wine red. I start with that wine red color and I go into one of the petals and just shade one side of that. I'm following the three lines on the petal. For the next one, it's more of an open petal, so I did a border around the outside. The third petal was a repeat of the second one where I just do a border around the edges and then I'm going to shade in a fourth petal just like the first one. To show you how I do my blending, I'm going to stop with the dark red now and bring in that lighter shade. And all I do is just fill in the rest of the open area using that color and it kind of draws that darker red in there as well. Now each time after I shade in a petal, you'll see there I do go off to the edge and wipe that brush off and that's just because that pink has now became kind of a red marker since I've picked up that darker shade. I just do this same thing with all of the petals until they are filled in with color. I went ahead and colored in the rest of the flower with this same technique, but I'm not gonna make you watch me color all of the flowers, but before I do go and do that off screen, I wanna share with you how I colored the leaves. 
For my greens, I am using number 41 light green and number 45 pale green. I will be starting with the darker one, which actually for these greens is the light green, and I go in with kind of the same technique, just drawing a line by where the shadows might be on the image, and usually there are lines to show you where this would be. Once those are all done, I bring in that lighter green and I just color in the rest of the open area. Here is a close up look at the finished piece. You'll notice that on some of the leaves, like the ones with all of the little petals, I just used the darker green and just colored it in solid. And then on the smaller rounded flowers, I used one of the reds and I blended that out to the rest of the open area with just a clear blender brush. This way there was some variation in color, but I still only stuck to those reds and greens. Now it was time to die cut that focal point. I was so thankful for the die that came with the stamp set. I'm holding this in place while I run it through my cuddle bug with the same piece of scotch blue removable tape that I used on those wood floor planks with my trimmer. The great thing about that tape is it doesn't ruin the paper when you pull it back up and you can keep reusing it. To cut a border around my sentiment, I brought in my little Fiskars photo trimmer, and I was a little reckless earlier when I was coloring off on my marker, and I got some of that red ink too close to the end of my Merry Christmas. But you'll see here that I am gonna fix that. I just kind of trim off a little bit from the edges, and then I'm gonna bring in my Stampin' Up, pick a banner punch, and I'm gonna punch a fishtail in each end of that banner. And you'll see that does go ahead and it takes that red off, and then I have a little decoration on the sentiment. I did want the sentiment to stand out just a little bit from the wood floor background, so off camera I cut a scrap of red cardstock into a half inch strip. I then used the same punch on the ends of this and cut that in half so I could put a little bit at the each end of my sentiment. This piece then got adhered flat down onto my card front. I just kind of centered it left and right toward the bottom third. And then I decided I wanted to add some dimension to my floral, so I brought in some Stampin' Up! dimensionals and added a few of them to the back of that piece. The release paper got pulled on those, and then this got placed above my sentiment. And here's a look at the finished card. I hope you enjoyed seeing the card that was inspired by challenge number seven, Would You Be Mine? If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. Don't forget that once you share yours online to leave a link below so I can come and verify that entry. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.